Good afternoon, everybody. I am Sarah Bernard, and we welcome you to this webinar. We're going to learn lots of great things today. Um, I am a, a senior coach with Workman Success Systems and also a, a team leader of a real estate team based in St. Louis, Missouri. And before we jump in, I'd love to know where you guys are all from. So if you could use the question um, box and just tell us where you're from, we'd love to know that. Uh, we've got um, panelists here from all across the country, just like you all. So um, we would love to know more about you all as well. And as we go throughout this webinar, um, certainly any questions you have, please put them in the in the question box. Um, we will have an opportunity at the end, but throughout, if you have any questions, just jump in and we'll try to get to those questions as we go. So first of all, I would like to um, thank um, Rocket Mortgage and Marsha O'Keefe, who is here representing Rocket Mortgage, um, and for sponsoring the webinar today. Uh, Marsha, tell us what's going on at Rocket Mortgage. Thank you, Sarah. So um, we have a lot of exciting things happening right now. So uh, by way of introduction, again, my name is Marshall O'Keefe. I am a senior director on our business development team here, which means that I do a lot of things, but ultimately speaking, a big part of my job is relationships with real estate agents. So. Uh, thank you. It's an honor and a pleasure to be involved. We appreciate RIS Media. Uh, we, you know, and all the different folks that are involved there. It's a, you know, feel very fortunate to be included in events like this and many others throughout the year. So it's a, you know, great organization. We're thankful to be here. So, with respect to what's going on at Rocket, um, a couple of things that I thought were relevant for this conversation. One of the things that we are seeing a ton of success with right now, and and folks are loving is our rate shield uh, or as it's been affectionately called by some folks the lock and shop which is an opportunity for buyers to lock an interest rate before they find the perfect home so uh, clearly in a fast moving market there's value with that so the lock is good for 90 days so somebody can call and, and say listen i'm interested in purchasing in the home in the near future but i haven't found the one however i'm concerned with the volatility that i'm seeing on the news so an opportunity to lock in an interest rate for 90 days prior to actually having an offer on a home. And then actually speaking of uh, the offer, once the offer is accepted, we will tack on an additional 40 days to make sure we get the loan all the way through closing. So to be clear, the 90 day lock, if you find a home on day 89 and have a fully accepted, fully executed purchase agreement, will not, will uh, add 40 more days and get you squared away. So again, given the market climate that we're in today, clients are obviously loving this option and the certainty that it provides. So uh, moving on to the next thing is, is uh, something called True Bill, and I wanted to talk about this because I felt like, given the theme of this discussion today in this panel, it was relevant uh, with respect to being involved with the full life cycle of a homeowner. So, True Bill is uh, essentially it's a money app that was recently purchased by Rocket Companies that empowers clients to save more, spend less, uh, and really take control of their finances. So uh, ultimately. It's integrating things, if, if used to full capacity, integrating things like credit card accounts or checking savings. And there's uh, you know, algorithms that are taking a look at what you're spending money on and analyzing and making suggestions. Uh, users can uh, monitor and in many cases cancel recurring monthly subscriptions as an example. And ultimately, you know, it essentially provides a more holistic view of your financial sort of well-being, uh, which you know then can sort of dovetail into potential home buyers understanding their mortgage readiness which of course ties into our core business which is exciting so uh, that's also again clearly beyond the initial home purchase something that with that level of functionality can going with the theme keep us in, in touch with folks as they you know own the home long term not just initially purchase it so uh, that you know memorial day we're excited the unofficial start of the home purchase season here in the summer for the the portion of the united states where that's applicable so we're excited and that's a little bit about what's going on at rocket all right thank you so much marshall and we started a long time ago so i don't know where you've been <laughs> but we'll just call it the official start right now this week so i know i know you've been busy just like us um, so thank you so much. I'd like to introduce our panelists today. We have Nicole Bostrom Kogan from uh, Wisconsin. She is an attorney and a, a broker, um, owner of her 
own brokerage. And I, I think I have that right, Nicole. We'll give you a chance to talk more about your business and a team leader. She's in the thick of it, just like um, all of you. And Jamel Ramirez Maynard from Los Angeles area, also a, a team leader um, there as well. And um, so we're going to get lots of great information from you ladies today. And Marshall, we're going to um, come back to you as well. So you're, you are not a stranger. <laughs> um, you, you hit, you're not done talking. Um, so let's jump in. Um, and Nicole, why don't you tell us a little bit about you and your business? And then we're going to pick your brain on um, how you go about creating customers for life. Sure. Um, so I've been in real estate for 23 years now. And um, I'm a real estate uh, broker owner, and I'm also an attorney. So it's kind of an interesting combination there. Um, but I've been around the block. I've been through multiple different markets. I've seen what works, what doesn't. And um, so it's just, I'm in the Milwaukee area um, and we've just got a great team and, and running pretty smooth. So I thought I'd, they asked me to do this webinar and I was like, sure, let's do it. Well, you're full of great ideas. Um, we know that. So let's jump right into that and let's talk about what your top three ideas are for creating customers for life. I know it's an important part of your business. So why don't you share with us some of your, those, um, those things on your mind and in your business? Yeah, I mean, I think what this really comes down to is, is knowing who your people are, you know, knowing, just being in relationships with them, just understanding them. Everything doesn't have to be salesy and pushy and all of those kind of things. So knowing your people, the, the old saying is um, be interested, not interesting. I thought that was uh, something that we've always lived by. You know, you want to ask questions and involve yourself um, with, the, with your clients know who they are and where they are in this stage of their life. Like, are they um, first time home buyers? Are they expecting a child? Do they have a child graduating? Is there a job relocation? Like paying attention, it's never been easier to know what's going on in our clients' lives than it is with social media, if, if they're on social media, um, because you're able to track that and follow along. And, and so being able to know your people when you see something good and exciting happening in, in their lives, make it a point to reach out to them or send them a note or their kids graduating and send them a card, just doing things um, that makes you connected. Um, and then staying in connected in meaningful ways. Um, so we love client events. That's to me, one of the funnest and easiest ways. So we try to do six events per year. It doesn't always work as we all know, sometimes it doesn't always work. Um, but I try to do two that are fun or entertaining. So um movie nights casino nights that kind of thing um i try to do two that add value or are educational and these can be even like a zoom webinar or something um you know doing one that would be like talking about things that people maybe don't want to talk about like um needing to do a will or healthcare power of attorney you know you can connect with attorneys on that you can also connect with your sphere and your and your top 50 and your people that are in your life to say hey you know you might have kids and maybe now would be a good time to get a will just in case anything ever happened. What are the questions that you might want to know or ask or how do you even get started? Just introducing some of those gentle ideas. So something that's valuable or educational. Um, and then we also like to do two that are um, charitable related. So whether that's um, Toys for Tots or we've got some um, groups that we partner with to, to raise money. So we try to stay connected with our people in just meaningful ways. Um, and then again, just being friendly and helpful. Like nobody likes a salesperson. I don't like a salesperson. You no know, one on this call likes a salesperson. Um, so find a way to be a source of information, be you in a way that you would want to receive it. So whenever I'm gonna do something, I always think, would I want this? Like, how would I approach it? Because, you know, we're all pretty critical of ourselves and, and how we like to receive things. So why not take advantage of that? Um, and just think about it in the way that you would you would like to do it. But there's all different ways and ideas, and we're going to talk more about it. But that was just kind of my quick three um, quick three ideas on how to stay stay connected with customers for life. Yeah, I love it. Thank you so much, Nicole. I do want to come back to client events. I know we're going to talk about it um, a little bit more, but you said something that I, I don't know if anyone noticed, but you said client events are easy, and I think most people would say they're not. <laughs> so what is it that you do that makes them easy in your mind? Okay, so the trick to making a client event easy is number one, have it at a place where they're gonna handle everything for you. So a movie event is an easy event. 
because they've got the movie theater, they'll have the popcorn, they'll have the soda. You just have to plan it, pick the day and the time, and then send out the invitations and collaborate that. So it, client events don't have to be overly complicated. They can also be so easy. I mean, I've gone so far as to plan a client event on a Friday afternoon because I saw there was a harvest fest coming up. And so I just created an invitation, said, hey, I'm gonna be at the harvest fest at this spot. If you wanna come and build the scarecrow, the scarecrow's on me. So we just hung out at the harvest fest and invited people. It did not, it was not complicated. It was literally 30 minutes and then I texted it out to people and it was so much fun. So it doesn't, you know, doesn't have to be overly complicated. It could be an ice cream social or, hey, I'm just going to be at this ice cream shop. Yeah. Stop by. Like, and the value of the event isn't how many people show up. And I think so many people get stuck on, I only had four people show up. And so it was not a good event. The value of the event is the text that you're, hey, I'm going to be having an event on this day. Hey, I'm going to be. Um, can you reach it? Can you make out like, can you, can you, can you connect with them? Having all those multiple points of connection, that's where the value is because they want to hear from you. They want to, um, they want to go, go to your event. And if they can't, they'll reach out and say they can't. And now we've just made a connection, you know, maybe, oh, I can't, I've got a soccer game. Oh, I didn't know so-and-so was playing soccer. Now all of a sudden you've got a segue. So the event itself isn't the value. It's the communication. And I think um, from what you're saying and the types of events that you're doing, um, it's that knowledge of your folks. It, it's a tight community, it sounds like. So let's jump to um, that this next slide and tell us about what this is, what this slide signifies, and how this equates to that close connection you have with, um, with your folks. Yeah, so um, through the coaching um, program that, that I'm lucky to coach for, um, Workman Success, we, we've got a top 50 program. And so with that, we're going to identify, obviously I know way more than 50 people. That's not a surprise. Um, but what I do is I take my top 50 people. These are people that I feel like are most likely to give a referral or people that I've got a really close relationship with, people that I'm going to enjoy talking to, that they know me, like me, and trust me. Um, and then I'm going to reach out to them and I'm going to ask their permission if it's okay if I reach out to them. Hey, is it okay if I just touch base with you once a month to see if there's anybody that you might know who's thinking about buying or selling? And if they say yes, then great, they can go on the top 50 list. If for some reason they're like, I don't really want to, you know, then I'll dig into that a little bit more and ask some follow-up questions. Okay, well, what is it? Is it, you know, do you not want to be bothered? You know, tell me, like, what can I tell you about the program to get you to say yes to this, right? Um, and so sometimes it's just lack of information. Um, but what the top 50 program does is it allows me to be systematic and to be able to approach my friends and family and people that I care about and make sure I don't miss anybody. The last thing you want is for somebody to fall through the cracks and not feel appreciated and valued. And the whole purpose of this program is to let people know you care about them. And if you approach it with that mindset, if you don't do it, then you feel kind of bad because you were like, oh, I didn't let Jamal know I cared about her today. Um, and, and, you know, like, relationships can change over a course of time where you lose contact and so the goal is to not lose contact to keep the ball um to keep the ball up in the air or the balloon up in the air as my daughter would say yeah and i i forgot to mention at the beginning of this webinar but um you just reminded me of that this top 50 program if you stick with us to the very end there's going to actually be a scannable download that you can get um a lot more information about how to run your own top 50 program. So make sure you stick with us to the end to get that. Um, this is also being recorded and you'll get a, a copy of the recording as well. So um, Nicole, thank you so much for sharing that um, the top 50 program is so easy um, as you described it. And um, we all know 50 people probably pretty well, whether or not we think, just look at how many Facebook friends you have and you know 50 of those pretty well. So let's jump to Miss Jamel. Um, Jamel, thank you for being with us today. So you're coming here from California and why don't you tell us a little bit about your business? Uh, thank you, Sarah. Hello everyone out there. So my name is Jamel Ramirez Maynard and I'm blessed to be in sunny Los Angeles County. I'm a broker associate at Keller Williams World Media Center. I'm honored to be a coach at Workman Success Systems, um, uh, just like Nicole and Sarah here. Uh, it's a great organization and we, you know, we've learned so much from them. But that's it. I've started in commercial real estate, property management. I've been a sales manager, you name it. I've probably done it in my 20 years. And right now I'm a team leader with my husband um, locally here. So 
that's the most fun. All right, very good. In business with your hubby, that's another webinar. <laughs> that's a whole other <laughs> webinar. <laughs> there. Uh, so let's talk about your top three. So when we think about creating customers for life, Jamel, how do you do that in your business? So Nicole really touched on, I think, the why, right? Um, and I wanted to touch a little bit on the how. And so um, we're gonna talk about this later, of course, just really being your authentic self. So I've got some friends on here um, and they just know that I call myself really punny, but I'm bump bump, right? So when um, the customers feel the same way, I like to have fun. Um, real estate can be very stressful. So the goal is to make it fun. And by doing that, and one of my favorite things that I picked on, uh, up early on is I'm a, I'm a giver. You know, there's a book called Giver's Game, and it's just in my nature, it's just who I am. And so we like to get in front of our clients at least five times a year with Popeyes. And I'm sure you guys have heard about those. Uh, you know, we too use the top 50 program, so we're able to see which months exactly we're stopping by. And that just gives you an opportunity to get face to face with your clients to see them walk inside their homes that you sold them and see their upgrades and just really connect. Um, Nicole hit on that beautifully. It's about connecting. It's not about the gift. It's not about what the card says. Um, you know, it's not about the flowers or anything that we drop off. It's more about the connection and being thoughtful. Um, I, learned, I learned really early on not to have commission breath, right? And to, to come from contribution. And part of that is is showing people you care, not just saying it. Uh, Nicole also kind of touched upon this. Social media leaves a lot of cues. You know, who's had a wedding anniversary? Um, who's graduated? I've got a stack of cards from the 99 cent store that I've, I've you know piled up at the house here in my home office. And anytime I see something like that, it's not only commenting there, it's taking it off social media. And I know Nicole and I do that very well we see so we'll pick up the phone and congratulations wow 20th wedding anniversary again people don't want to be made feel like they're a dollar you have a transaction and then they never see you um you know decide are you a relationship realtor or are you a transactional realtor and i decided a long time ago to be a relationship realtor and and, and turn to back it up and then to go, go along with our raffles and giveaways, we, of course, give back to a charity called Thank the Soldier. It's a unique to our Keller Williams Burbank office. Um, we, we like to, to support our local community, just like Nicole does, of course. And we, every month, I give away something. It's got a $100 raffle car, uh, card. That's a great way to support local businesses, too. Um, so it, in turn, helps the business and, in turn, gets people to open our email. Because when you give away something free, let me tell you, that open rate shoots up. So, so who are, who are you, um, who's participating in the giveaways and raffles then? Uh, uh, just like Nicole said, our top 50. And I actually have several top 50s because I've learned a long time ago that uh, the top 50 program is such an amazing thing because it takes it out of your CRM. Now, everybody's in the CRM, right? Uh, whatever CRM that you use, labeled. So you've got past clients. When you're in the business as long as Nicole and I have, you've got you know, tons of past clients. Not all past clients may be in the top 50, but that top, those, those raffle giveaways are, are are segmented to our past clients and our top 50, or past clients not on the top 50 to be specific. Okay, great. And so you mentioned five top buys, and Nicole mentioned six client events. Are you also doing client events? Absolutely. So I think the next slide, uh, so basically, um, one of the things that I learned early on systematically is to really take uh, a calendar right so here's a simple calendar that i had my admin create january and december and and fill it in so i'll just verbally tell you what our calendar looks like it's just very so it's 12 emails so each of those emails gives the raffle it's two events we do a portraits in the park event which is so simple get a photographer and people love to have their updated photos for the holidays for their holiday cards and we also do a pie event which is you know very common uh, we do five Popeyes and uh, five mailers and call every month. So that actually equates to 36 touches in a 12 month period. But so, the and, and these are all planned out in it before January every year. But it sounds yeah. like you you replicate it every year, more or less. More or less, uh, certain things have changed. Like, you know, just like Nicole, you have your your thing that you you do really well at the porches in the park. Absolutely. But still, start simple. Start with 12, right? Start with something and actual items that you can do consistently. Very simple. Um, start with five, right? I think the statistic uh, we were talking about this is that, what is it? 12%, uh, you know, NAR statistic, 12% of, of uh, buyers 
uh, actually use the same realtor. Well, Nicole and I don't really have that problem because we're connected with our past clients, our sphere, and our um, our you know main influential people in our top 50 at least 12 times, if not more, uh, a year. So we, you mentioned top 50, Nicole mentioned top 50. Marshall, I'm gonna jump to you for a minute and bring you back in. Do you have this a similar type of top 50 in what you're doing in your business? Does that ring true for you as well? Yeah, I think, you know, from, from my purview, our focus again is, is relationships and partnerships that we have with, it could be individual agents, it could be teams, offices, sometimes large brokerages. So, you know, we very similarly, obviously maybe the, some of the minutia is a little different, but we ultimately like to understand where is our top 50 and, and how can we interact with these folks and how can we add value? One of the things that both Nicole and Yamel said that I, I took away was that um, it's, it's different and it's unique content and it's not necessarily hammering. Like for me, I, I don't want to just call and talk about mortgages all the time. Like that starts to fall on deaf ears and there's less, less and less impact that has over time. And if there's something of value that I can share and there's, uh, you know, information that I feel like is, is useful for these folks or, or whoever it is that we're interacting with, they, that they're looking forward to hearing, that's one thing, but it's, it's not always about that. It's about, you know, continuing to just be relevant, provide value, but not be overbearing, which it sounds like these two have done, um, you know, in space. So yeah, we, we certainly have very similar systems and uh, perhaps not as organized <laughs> as you guys are, if I'm gonna be candid, but uh, I'm excited about uh, seeing how that's put together because I know we can learn from it. So it was great. Very good, thank you so yeah, much. I would, just, I would even add like, just any system that you do, even if you just do one client event, like don't be, don't, don't feel like because we're doing a lot that you have to do a lot. Even doing one can have an impact. I mean, I think one client event I had, we ended up with, I don't know, $36,000 worth of value from it just from one one not very large event. Um, and so it doesn't have to be overwhelming. Just try something that you enjoy doing and invite others to it. If you start there, I think you'll... Thank you. Another another thing you can do is look to your brokerage, right? Um, a lot of times your 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 brokerage, and I'm a big brand, so I can they they put on certain events. That's an opportunity for you to invite your past clients, your sphere, to that. If if that's something that you're not you know creative about, just join that. No, well, actually, I, we we do a lot. I, I just I, something to add in here as well is that we there's some things that we do with some some brokerage partners that we coordinate and sort of co-market for lack of a better word with some events and most of the folks on this call if not everybody has a preferred you know person i would love it if they were rocket in most cases but that's not the, whoever it is right connect with those people understand how you can collaborate understand how you can attract audiences from maybe both purviews and really make it successful and divide the work in half and the cost yeah that's great and uh i think uh, Jamel, you mentioned Pi Events, which is a popular event among real estate um, offices around the country. Is there anything that any of you have um, learned to do to make that event stand out so you're not just doing what that brokerage down the road is doing? Anything different? I mean, what I learned early, early on is people will drive to pick up a free pot because <laughs> Los Angeles, 18 miles can take you an hour. And, um, but really, it's, um, we actually did ours. Uh, because of COVID and at our house, we had people come to our house and that's a big um, talk about connection. How many times have you been in your client's house and now it's vice versa? We're inviting them in, they're meeting my two beautiful puppies. That right there, that's that creates customers for life because you, you just find a different level of connecting. It's not about the pie, it's not about any of that. And um, it's just about that connection. Have some, um, there's another agent in my office who serves like hot cider. Um, you just make it warm and fuzzy. I think that's just really what I've learned over the years. Yeah, Nicole, yeah. anything else? We do Kringles, so we don't do pies. So in Wisconsin, a Kringle is a thing and it's delicious and people seem to enjoy them. So we make it a, um, we actually do a St. Nick. St. Nick is popular in Wisconsin too. Again, we're very, we do very different things, um, but then the eve of St. Nick or around St. Nick will um, drop off a Kringle and that's kind of our take on the pie. It's about a week later, so not too far, but in the in the, in the the holidays to still. So do people, they come to your office to pick up these Kringles, which are what, it's like a pastry. So yeah, it's like a pastry, yep. And we've done it both ways. So 
we've had people come to our office and usually if they come to the office we've done a toys for tots drop off at the same time so if anybody wants to bring toys for tots they can do that and so we're kind of tying two together um, but I've also shipped them across the country I have personally delivered them so if you can't make it that doesn't mean you're not getting a Kringle um, it just means that we're gonna we're gonna seek you out a different way so within your offices, who is responsible for planning all the details of these events that you're doing? Is it, are you guys, do you have someone else? How, and, you know, think about the people who are watching our webinar right now have our big offices and little offices. So what's, what's your tip there? I think well, early I can, on. I've done that. both. I've <laughs> them, planned them all myself and I've had people help me. So I've done both gamuts. Um, planning it yourself, you're nice because you know when things are done. You know, like you're the one, I don't have to worry about, did this get done, did this not get done, how did that work? Um, and then planning it with someone helping you, then you just want to have a, you know, you want to have a system around it so that, and consist, consistent check-ins, but I don't know if Jamel has any um, other thoughts on that. Yeah, I mean, I could definitely pull some workman tools on this. I actually use that workman tool all the time. It's called an agile, where you brain dump and then set everything by the priority. I know Nicole shared how it occurs with us, and I was taking some notes, and you know, together you achieve more, right? And it's it definitely is something that um, I would highly encourage you if you've got help. It could be your husband, it could be your children, it could be a partner, whatever. Um, because it's it's a lot to put on one person. But early in the early days, it was just me. Um, but it, since then, I've had um, a client care coordinator and admin, client care coordinator, admin. My husband, of course, he gets his honey do list, and um, you know, we have fun. And um, earlier on um, in this webinar, Jamel, you were talking about the 12 month calendar and repeating it. So once you do that event and you map it out and you keep those notes for next year in the year agile or whatever um, system you're using for project management, you don't have to go back and recreate the wheels. So there's a lot of value in just um, in keeping really good notes and where you get those Kringles or where you get those pies and all of that stuff. Um, Somebody asked a question about, going back to Nicole, you were talking earlier on about doing a movie event. So when you mm -hmm. do a movie event, tell us a little bit more about how you do that. And also the specific question is, are you supplying your clients with popcorn and drinks or just the movie? Yeah, so we do. So uh, we have a discount movie night where it's like $5 to get in to see the movie. I will strategically place the movie on that night because then I can afford to get the popcorn for the same price as I would if I did the movie on a different night. Um, so, you know, and reach out to your movie theaters and tell them what you're looking to do and um, and maybe they'll work with you. Like sometimes they let me sneak candy into the movie theater. I'm just saying like, we don't have to buy it from them. That's been a nice thing. Um, hope they're not watching this. Um, but the point is, is that, I mean, we'll bring like, so yeah, so we'll do popcorn, soda, um, movie ticket. I'll usually also like I had light up pens made that like you hit the thing and like the pens would glow our color um, and so I had that with a box of candy on the chairs um, and then I've had people like for years oh, I still have that light up pen so um, I know some people will have everybody wearing the same shirts we haven't gotten that sophisticated yet only because I don't want to deal with everybody's shirt sizes and this one doesn't fit and I don't like the color and it seems like complicated but um, but pens everybody likes so um, so yeah so that's how we do it. I call yeah. that pen paraphernalia. You must have all of that stuff to be able to give away, right? <laughs> all the swag. Um, are you guys have you been successful in getting others other vendors to help you with the budget on these events? Absolutely yes. The lender we have a go-to lender uh, of course. Marshall is already a volunteer for anybody in his local area, right? Marshall. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Very good. And it's nice because it can be lenders, but it can be title company. Like we do a casino night. Um, historically, we've done several casino nights. And so we'll have the title company sponsoring or home inspector sponsoring different table games and all kinds of stuff. And so just reach out to your people and they want to be a part of it and then include them and make sure to announce them and make sure that they know that they're valued too, because there's nothing more frustrating than showing up to an event. Um, and then being like, oh, I was just a guest here, and I didn't, you know, so like make people aware that, you know, hey, you've got people that are helping you bring this event to them. And we have one more question before we jump to the next topic, and that is, do you guys have an effective way to measure the return on the investment of your events? Are you, how, and you mentioned something about that, Nicole, a few minutes ago, but is there, um, how are you guys doing that? 
Yeah, so we've done um, contests or kind of a referral thing uh, so people can register and sign in and say that they were there. So A, we're keeping attendance of who's there. That's probably an important thing. Um, and then we do a follow-up afterwards and say, hey, thanks so much for attending the event. Um, did you know anybody who is thinking about buying or selling? They say yes or no, we write their name down. And so that's how we were able to quantify. Um, so it's reaching out afterwards to either thank them for attending or conversely, hey, sorry, you weren't able to attend. So we're doing it both ways. So you're not just, you, don't, you know, you can reach out on both sides. And how are you reaching out? Is that by email, or by text, phone? Usually by phone call. I find that to be the most effective. If I have to leave a voicemail, I'll follow it up with a text because some people don't like voicemails like me. So I just assume a text works good too. And to add to that, you know, we track everything, um, you know, through our system, the uh, Workman Success Systems. And I like to also think of it as it's at the intention, right? Think with the end in mind. So when you are having that event, put that intention out there, you know, it doesn't have to be salesy appreciate we say to each other okay our goal is to get you know four referrals out of this that's that's what we say to the team i have a very direct husband um if you know the disc profile is a super high d and he will straight up just ask hey do you know anybody looking to buy sell uh at the event uh on your doorstep whatever so he's not very shy at all and and they do procure um they do procure uh referrals for sure Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Very good. All right, so let's jump to um, handwritten notes. We've talked a little bit about that. Jamal, you mentioned um, having a, um, a stack of cards available at all times <laughs> um, to send notes when you see things on social media, but how effective um, and how often are you guys sending handwritten notes? It's not something we see anymore in our society very often. Well, I mean, ask yourself, when's the last time you checked your mail and when's the last time you received anything of you know pseudo value, right? There's a lot in there. And when you make it colored and you put a fun stamp on it and you just take a minute and write, I, I want to say almost every day, um, the birthdays and the home anniversaries are easy. We back those up with, with gifts, of course, as well. Um, but it's, it's people will call you and say, that is so nice of you. Thank you so much. Um, you know, this is the first handwritten note I've received all year. Um, really, it's a simple uh, time efficient way, especially if you're a newer agent. Um, you know, we get a 99 cent store and just pick up a pack of get well, get, you know, whatever you can think of. And just again, you know, it's it's a meaningful small touch, and it's not really not. And we don't make it. We don't put our. I don't ever put Jamel from Keller Williams. I just put my name, Jamel. I don't mm -hmm. put my business card in it. I just make it about them. So it's really um, authentic, and um, it's from you. It's from your heart. Um, Nicole, what about you? Anything to add? Yeah, I mean, yeah, the same thing. I mean, I I agree with everything Jamel just said. Being authentic is the most important part of this, right? So if you, if note cards don't resonate with you, or if you don't feel like you would resonate with them, don't do it. You know, if a phone call is easier or, you know, find, find something that feels really good and feels like something that you would do and it feels natural, then you're going to do it. Um, you know, I think that's the key, like doing the first one is always the key. And so find something that resonates with you. Like our family's a big hockey family. So I advertise at hockey arenas and talk to people about hockey. That's something that we do. So find something that's authentically you, because that's easy to talk about. Um, and real estate's obviously an easy topic everybody wants to talk about. So that makes it pretty and people, authentic. People there. can see through that, don't you think, Nicole um, and Sarah? It's it, They just know. I mean, okay, this, if you're just yourself, um, you know, people have often said, wow, Jamel, you, you know, you, I'm on social media. I'm congratulating. That's just who I am. I've, I've been like that since, you know, day one. And it's, that's, and people know that when they work with us, this is what they get. So, you, but a wise person once told me, uh, Mr. Paul Sesson, so there's only one you, so be you. Yeah, that's great. Marshall, do, does handwritten notes, does that hit home for you at all? Or do you do something different? We, uh, yeah, I, I think for us, it's mostly geared around the holiday season. That's probably the time when it, you know, for us, we were Rocket Mortgage is based in Detroit and it's something that we really are, are prideful of and loyal to our hometown. So what we'll generally do is curate a gift basket of a lot of, you know, sort of small, meaningful trinkets that are, uh, you know, Detroit based or local small businesses and put together a, an attractive little basket that's sent out to a top 50 or top 100 that not only, you know, says, hey, we're thinking about you, which by the way, we do include handwritten notes, which, you know, we are doing billions of dollars a year and that's not a plug. I'm just saying it, 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 you're never too big to slow down and do things the right way. 
So I think that's more meaningful, obviously, what the goes without saying. And, and it is nice to be able to, you know, talk about our hometown and kind of put a face and a, and a, and a you know, name behind the brand. And, um, you know, I know a lot of our loan officers take on that as well. And the company actually believes in it so much that they supplement the cost of that a lot of times as well. So it's something that we encourage from the top down for sure. Mm -hmm. That's great. Thank you. Um, we just have, an, have another question from our audience about closing gifts. It's not something we've talked about yet. How do you guys handle closing gifts? And also, um, Marshall, in your world, this might come into play as well. But Jamel, what do, you, what do you do? Do you buy closing gifts or do something different? My accountant uh, tells me that on my gift giveaways that needs to, to reduce. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But we ask them, honestly. And, and I always say, you know, people will give you clues. Um, I don't want to give someone a a dinner certificate if they don't like Italian, you know what I mean? So we just plan and ask them. Um, often what I'll say, uh, my husband will say is, you know, we, we typically give out a ring doorbell or, uh, or something for the home, like a nest. So we give two examples, kind of sets the parameters. It's about $200. And again, I'm in Los Angeles, so price points are a little high, <laughs> just a side note. And so it kind of gives them a parameter of what to choose. And they usually pick something, did the nest or ring doorbell or some people, um, you know, it depends, but we, we, that we make it personal. And, it, and, the, and so when you say they, they're choosing, are you talking about the clients or are you talking about the agents on your team? Sorry, the, the, no, the, the client, the buyer and the seller, we give them on both sides. We ask what, well, you know, thank you. We appreciate your business. Um, this is something that we, we do for every client. And we're very appreciative of you choosing us and your trust in us. Um, again, dot, dot, dot. Would you like a nest? Uh, we want to show our appreciation through a gift. And I, when I say to them, you should choose, otherwise I'm going to get you something you may not want. I'm not blunt. So mm -hmm. uh, generally, dollars as far as budget goes. So you do buy gifts yeah, so, and it's okay. Mm -hmm. Nicole? Yeah, we buy gifts too. Um, so for sellers, well, if, if it's a seller who has maybe lived in their home for a long time or showed that they liked their home, because sometimes sellers don't, um, you know, it depends on the circumstances, but we'll do a, we'll take one of our professional photography shots and we'll frame it with a canvas with a wood wrap around it. Um, that always brings tears. Uh, people always cry because especially if it's like yesterday we had a closing and it was the lady lived in her house for 46 years um, and her husband had recently passed away and she was moving away and it was just, you know, it just hit home because ultimately that's what we're trying to do. And every time that she walks past her new place and sees a picture of her old house, she's gonna feel good things about it. Now, if she didn't like her house, don't do that. That wouldn't be the one to do, but for this lady, it was perfect. Um, so just trying to be thoughtful of who the person is um, and where they're going, so yeah. Marshall, what about you? Do you, in your world, um, are closing gifts yeah, we've done we've done this different we've yeah we've done some different things throughout the years. It's been you know sort of theme that goes out to a wide variety. It's it's you know I I'm I'm not gonna in full transparency. It's a little tougher to be personalized when you're doing the you know the, the number of transactions and that kind of thing. But it, it's it's sometimes is the thought that counts. And and candidly, I listen to these stories like the call is a great story. I I often am I'm jealous about you know there's uh it's a little difficult for us to get that type of a you know that close of a connection to people and um you know it doesn't mean we're not going to continue to try to figure out ways that we can you know share that experience but that's very very cool and and I think uh you know I can tell you if I was on the receiving end of something like that it would be very meaningful so it's one of the many reasons why you found the success that you have I'm sure it's great. That's awesome. Okay, so important question um, coming up here. Um, this is for all of you. If looking back um, at the beginning of your careers in real estate, is there anything that knowing what you know now, you would do different in those first couple of years? Because we have a lot of people on this call who are new to the industry. Jamel? Absolutely. <laughs> So um, in the DISC profile, I like to label myself as a super high I personality, which is very sociable, very personable, um, if you haven't noticed. And one of the things that I struggled with, especially early on, is just being systematic, um, you know, starting the CRM a little earlier, but this, something to make it simple, like the top 50, um, really just changed our career. You know, during um, COVID, 67% of our business came from the top 50. And it was a big, big eye opener for us because um, just as Nicole, we're not only coaches, we actually get coached ourselves. And so that was, wow, all this stuff 
that we're doing these meaningful touches are working, but I didn't do it systematically. I did it more natural. It was very, you know, fly by night. Um, and having that, just that simple spreadsheet, right, Nicole, of just seeing, okay, how many times you've touched with that person and that person, um, things of that nature really was a big aha for me. Um, and so just being more systematic faster. <laughs> And for those who may have joined us a little bit late, the top 50 is your 50 people who are most likely to refer business to you, whether or not they actually do a transaction with you. And at the end of this um, webinar, we're going to have a download for you to do your own top 50 to learn how to do that. So that's coming up. Um, Nicole, so any any tips on what you might have done differently or would, would advise a newer realtor to do? Um, I'm really sorry to let you guys know that I'll be talking for the remainder of this webinar based on that question. Um, <laughs> the reality is, is that we are learning as we are going in this. And there's a million things that I would be doing differently or that I wished I would have done differently. I mean, Jamel hit on a lot of them. Being systematic, that's a huge one. Like just the ability to save time and the think and pre-plan. and But I mean, it even goes back even beyond that to don't sit in your real estate office and listen to the negative naysayers who are doing no transactions this year, but you're somehow taking advice from them. Don't do that. Surround yourself with people who are doing business. Learn from them. Find a peer group that is actually selling houses. And those will be your people. If you follow the group that is really good at talking, to each other that's not the answer and every office has it sorry people in the office you're right now you're self-identifying i'm sorry <laughs> break out of that habit <laughs> because the reality is is you don't make any money sitting in a real estate office unless you're on the floor desk and even then it's questionable so get out there and network and be social be yourself every single thing that was in here be yourself be authentic follow through communicate well like if you go out there and do that there's a million people looking to sell houses. There's way more people than we have real estate agents, business owners. I mean, everybody thinks, no, it's this competitive thing. If you're yourself, you're just going to attract. So be positive and attract the good people into your life who are meant to be there. It doesn't have to be a struggle. Just be intentional and be positive. Great advice, Nicole. Yeah. Um, okay, you know what? I jumped too quick. I don't want to get there yet. I want to talk about this um, next slide and thank you both. And let me just um, go go to Marshall just for a minute. Is there anything that you would do differently um, if you were advising someone in the mortgage or real estate industry? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, Nicole hit on a couple of good things. I mean, you know, you, you surround yourself with the people that you want to be like. And I, in my experience, I've found that you very rarely, if not never, get critical feedback from people that are doing better than you. It's always from the ones on the other side. So uh, if you can find the right, you know, sphere of influence, that's a good thing. I, I think for me, and I, it's it's sort of lending thing, but I do believe it probably applies to real estate. Is is focusing on relationships. I mean, I, I think that's something. In the beginning, I I took it was 15 years ago, plus or minus. So the 2007-2008 time frame was interesting for lots of reasons. But I took more of a wide and shallow approach to to the way that I conducted my business, and I was probably spread too thin. Uh, I may have earned, or I should say, asked for and gotten referrals from, you know, the ones and twos among a much wider berth, and I probably should have been focused on a more narrow and deep approach and connecting with people on a level that ultimately provided me with the opportunity to earn, not just ask for, which if you ask, you'll generally get one, but if you earn, they're the only one you ever think of. And, and trying to get from one to the other is... Um, an important function no matter what line of work you're in and certainly for the folks on this call. So that's, for me, it would be relationships and focusing on them. And I, I mean, I think somebody once told me that, you know, referral-based businesses are recession-proof. I don't know if I'd go quite that far, but it certainly helps. Yeah, but no, but I, I would go that far, actually. <laughs> I think that's exactly right. I think that's what the, the point of this is, is, um, is there's so much that we can do without spending a lot of money um, and even being worried, we worry a lot in real estate about the transactions and how do we write a contract and all of those technical things. But at the end of the day, our business is, ba is based on relationships and referrals. It really is because we're not going to continue to stay in business without that reputation that follows the good work that we do. Um, so um, the, this whole webinar is about creating customers and clients yeah. for life. Sarah, I don't wanna jump. I wanna hear what you would do different. <laughs>
You've been Let's in this business around to me. <laughs> yeah, well, thank you, Nicole. You. What do you think? I think that um, there's, I could, I, again, take another whole hour on that topic, but I think that understanding that we don't need to do it all alone, um, there's so much value in um, creating a, a tribe of people around us, whether it's an official team or just people that we collaborate with and share ideas with, um, learn as much as possible, um, creating um, a really workable CRM like Jamel answered, um, those kinds of things um, and, and work full time. I mean, you know, that is one thing I did at the beginning of my career in real estate. I jumped in, I did it full time. I didn't see any other way, but I see a lot of people tiptoeing into the business and, and um, getting frustrated because maybe, you know, they're, they're three or four months in and they haven't had a transaction, so they give up, but they're only showing up and working two or three hours a day. So you go in um, full time, eight hours a day, whether you're watching training videos or going to webinars or writing personal notes to everyone you know, um, all of those things can fill your day and, and business will start coming in. So I think um, that that would be my number one tip for anybody new to the, to the, to the business. So thanks for turning that around, Nicole, back on the moderator. <laughs> yep. um, so let's talk about what is the value of a client. And there's actually some math behind this. So if you do a transaction for somebody and it, whether or not actually it's somebody in your top 50, what are they worth over a lifetime? It's not just one transaction. I think a lot of times that's what we think. Um, we think, you know, we got that $3,000, $5,000, $10,000 commission check, and now we close that door and we move on to the next one. We forget about what that person can do for our business for the next 20, 30 years. So um, I, I know before we jumped on this uh, webinar, one of you guys was doing the math on this. Who's got the answer? Does anybody know the actual answer? Nicole will do it in Wisconsin terms and I'll do it in Los Angeles terms. <laughs> right, yeah, exactly. So um, so the idea is if, if a real estate commission is $3,000, let's say, because we're not all in Los Angeles. So um, if a real estate commission is 3000 the person buys a house with you, then in a few years, they're going to sell a house with you, maybe buy another house with you assuming you stay in contact with them and follow the advice in this webinar. Um, if not, they're gonna call you know, somebody else. So, so you wanna stay in contact with them. So then maybe they're gonna buy another cycle. So you know, we say maybe five-ish transactions or seven, it just kind of depends on you know, your people. But the value of the client doesn't just end there because there's potential referral business, you know, on average, you should be able to get at least two referrals from every person you do a deal with going forward. And so the value of a client is really based on that. Um, and tying that kind of into a client event, we, um, I once had a movie night and we had, I, I realized that I had a chain of people who had been referred to me through various things. And I had the very first person stand up and then the person they referred stood up and the person they referred stood up and the person they referred stood up and the, and I could literally tie a string between all six of them and say and I wouldn't know so and so if it wasn't for so and so and that's how this business works and that was really powerful so um what is a client worth there's a, that's not that's not a real number you can't, I don't think you can really quantify it. I mean, you could do the math, but it's a lot more than one transaction if you do it right. But Jamal, well, you and if, every, if every past client sends you one referral a year, that $3,000, let's call it in Wisconsin or Missouri, where I am, um, is now, uh, do the math on that. What's 3,000 over the next 20, 30 years, right? So. Yeah. Um, and that's the thing is if you establish those relationships and stay in touch and whether you have big lavish events or not, um, you it's just staying in touch. Those 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 clients, if you've done your job well, will send you referrals and um, over and over again. And you can build your entire business and keep and sustain it based on that system, like Marshall said earlier. Um, Jamel, um, anything else to add on that? I mean, Nicole said it beautifully, but you know, early on, uh, for the this is for the newer agents. Um, I connected with um, one family member, and that family member um, then in turn referred me to the rest of the family members. So 
early on I was the family realtor and this is this has happened time and time again so don't discount okay I don't have any past clients there's you know I, I don't have the budget for a client event just stay in relationship and come from contribution and be valuable like Marshall and both Nicole have said and and you have no idea that the answer to this question is very it's invaluable and with a lot of zeros here in Los Angeles and um, you know, one out of every nine person in, in California is a realtor. Uh, but there's a reason, uh, there's a top 20% is because just follow systems of, of connecting. And again, are you relationship or are you transactional? Ask yourself that after this call. And if your relationship put into, okay, what's my relationship plan? What's my January touch? My, my, my t message of the month, something to connect with my top people and go from there. But it's, it's as simple as just, you know, it's invaluable. That's really the answer. Yeah, absolutely. Anything else on that, Marshall, to add? No, I think they said it beautifully. I, I would uh, just be reiterating the same thing. So I think that was great. Great. Do we any if there's any other questions? I've been trying to monitor the questions. If you all um, listening today have any other questions, please put them in the question box. Um, we are here for a few more minutes. I'm happy to answer anything that you have or that's on your mind or talk about any topics related to real estate. Um, and I also um, would like to share with you uh, a scannable download. We're going to get to that here. Um, so you can, let's see, I just jumped out of it. Hold on, we'll get back there. Well, I think you guys can see this. So I, um, but you can scan the um, the QR code to get the downloads, which are fantastic. So there's a book um, called 8651, which explains the whole top 50 system that we've been talking a little bit about today, the whole referral based business and the top 50 tracker, which we showed in one of our slides early on, which is how you keep track of those 50 people and touching them in some meaningful way every single month. And then if you'd like a strategy session uh, with Workman Success Systems, um, Nicole, Jamel, and I are all coaches with um, with Workman. In addition to having our own real estate businesses, a strategy session. It's not with one of us. It's with um, it's somebody who's actually trained to run your strategy session and and to learn more about your business. And it's really meaningful. I think it's up to a 60 minute call. It's there's it's complimentary, and it'll be with someone who is an expert at diving into your business and helping you see the opportunities that you might be missing, what you're doing right, what you could be doing differently. So that those are all available with that QR code download. So just um, scan that with your phone and it'll send you the links for all of those things. Yeah, I, would, um, I would even add just to that, uh, as long as we're looking for questions, is you know that strategy session is probably one of the best decisions you can ever make in your business. Like, I mean, signing up with Workman for me, probably for Jamel too, um, probably you, Sarah, like totally transformed my business, my life in such a way that it does, it's a free strategy session and you're going to walk away from there looking at your business differently. I guarantee it um, because the way we think about things is transactional and sometimes having somebody else peel back the layers and look at it differently, you'll walk out of there saying, oh, I get it. I'm a CEO. I'm running a business. It's a different level of sophistication that you'll gain from that. So I, I wouldn't not that's the most valuable thing of the things here in my opinion to do it. And the question to ask yourself is, you know, how often are you working, like Nicole just said, in your business and how often are you working on your business? And this 60 minutes of your, of your week is the working on your business and to have somebody who understands business at a high level, look at it from a lens and to see it'll see the gaps. Um, even at our level, um, you know, we're still in coaching because there's always gaps. Yeah, absolutely. We do have one question that just came in. Um, do any any of you have email content that you subscribe to that you can get monthly? Any good um, go-tos for that resource? We use Keeping Current Matters. Um, they provide a lot of statistics and analysis that I like because they kind of spoon feed it to me. Um, and so I don't have to think it through. I can customize the colors and branding. So I've been, I've been happy with that. Um, Riz Media does a great job too. So um, yeah, there's all different kinds of options. I, I think it's an abundant amount. Um, there's quite a few companies out there that send emails out. Subscribe. I subscribe to a lot of things. I put it in a folder and then my admin and I put together a newsletter. It was just once a month, once a month newsletter um, for, this, for the top 50 and the CRM. 
Um, but like she said, keeping current matters is great. Your local data, your brokerage should also have resources for you, especially if you're newer. Uh, there's some great uh, things you can pull from your brokerage as well. There's a, I, there's a lot that I subscribe to, but the one that I'm excited about lately is um, I, I'm actually, I've, I've, I've gotten um, on lists of, of real estate agents, actually. So, you know, it's great for me to understand in our lending space, and, and there's a lot that we can learn there clearly, but uh, we got advice recently of, of, you know, if we want to really dial it up and step our game up, we've got to understand the real estate game at a level that maybe other lenders don't. So immersing ourselves in the, the lens of an agent, what they're thinking about seeing, you know, how they're approaching their day and, you know, how we, what we can take from that to offer better service and, and sort of meet folks where they need us to be a little bit better is something that I have, uh, I've really been excited about lately and gotten some really good stuff from. And don't forget video. I mean, you could make a simple, forget, you know, putting all this content together. You just do a quick little video to your to your people on, on a via email or text or anything. That's that's worth a, a lot as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, think about the questions that you're getting often from your friends or clients when you go to a party and people are asking about the market or whatever. What are those questions? And just do a, a quick 60 second video answering those and, and send that out. Bomb Bomb is a good resource for that. Or there's other ways to, to you can just link it to a YouTube and, and link in your emails. Also, if you're a writer and you just want to write your own emails, um, a short story, a short success story. And it may, if you're new to the business, you may not have a lot to draw on, but just something else from your life you know your more your tips for a successful start to your day you know that could go out instead of a real estate story if you don't have one yet so if you can write a short email and through any any um crm and there's a lot of free ones out there available you can do a mass email blast um uh, there's lots of constant context is one there's a lot of different ones that you can use so and also Don't pull, from, it. pull from your community. There's events that you could highlight. And also we do a vendor spotlight in our in our um, monthly newsletter. Um, you know, and again, sometimes we'll we'll, we'll highlight the the success story about the, the vendor that we used or anybody else used, because there's so there's so much you could do. Mm -hmm. um, another question um, from a listener. Um, can you explain the process for the raffles and drawings? Um, one of you had mentioned that. Um, do you want to talk more about that? I use a simple Google um, form. Or we use a simple Google form. Um, I set a budget of $100 and um, put an image of that um, and I put in the headline, you know, free, what, you know, what is it? Uh, Martino's Bakery is a big one here, and so I'll support them um, and just say free, you know, $100 gift certificate to Martino's. Uh, put a little bit about the business itself and just have people fill out a Google form. It's takes you know takes us all of five minutes i don't overthink it and people if they want to you know submit their information they will and we usually get a decent amount of turnaround um one thing that we're actually implementing again we're always putting layers is doing a live video and doing it on instagram and picking the raffle winner so instead of me just picking it oh, that's yeah that's that's us awesome. that's an idea that i have to, um i'm implementing right now as we speak so very good all right. <clears throat> Any anything else? Otherwise, um, we I just want to make sure everybody scans that QR code for the giveaways. And thank you so so much for being with us. We're right at the end of our hour, so we don't want to keep anybody from your next activity. Um, and thank you so much for being here with us today. It's, it's been super fun. Thanks, you guys, Jamel, Nicole, yeah. Marshall. It's been fun. Thank you. Thank you.